to my ministry. In fact, you empowered our men, Amen. and just the Lord used you tremendous. First of all, just tell us a little bit what God is doing in your ministry at the moment. First and foremost, I'm, I'm really excited about the fact that God has blessed us with a four-month-old daughter. Wonderful. Uh, Congratulations. I'm excited because it's brought another level of joy to the already joy that exists within our home. And then in terms of the ministry, God has just has me moving from city to city, state to state, and moving even out of the country in terms of preaching engagements. And uh, the power of the presence of God has just been awesome in how God has been moving from one church to the next and experiencing his presence in the midst. And uh, that's one of the greatest things besides the local church's extreme growth that's taken place. Yes. That's a major move right there. When I came to your church, there were people all outside. i never forget this. I drove up. And on, we call it the pavement, you call it the walkway, right? right? And I'm coming up and I'm just seeing people all over. I mean, in their church, they're hanging all over the building, <laughs> trying to, I'm, it was like, you know, I, 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 if anybody needed a miracle, they'd have to tear the roof off to get into your, Amen. but the presence of God. Now, tell me about, we've been talking about the Holy Ghost, we're talking about the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If someone's hearing for the first time and wanted to know, what would you say to them? One of the most important things we need to learn about the Spirit of God is that God is first and foremost a speaking God. Yes. And being a speaking God and being communicative as he is, we have to recognize that the Holy Spirit actually literally comes to empower the believers. But it comes to assure that the power of the resurrected Christ continues to exist. Mm -hmm. It's not coming just to make us look good. Good. It's coming to do work. And most of us tend to forget that the Holy Spirit comes to do that. So if someone's coming for the first time to understand what the Holy Spirit's doing, the Holy Spirit's also coming to commune. It literally means that the higher is coming to the lower wow. to bring the lower up to the higher and bring us into a communion that the lower has never experienced before. Wow. And when we understand that, we understand that the natural it has to be removed from the human body because the communicative God wants to communicate to the body of Christ who lives here on the earth, how to function, how to walk, how to talk, how to speak a language. Now, the, I gotta understand this from this angle. If every kingdom that there is has a language, yes. every kingdom has a song, every kingdom has a representation or an insignia that literally depicts them, that says this is their kingdom. They use coat of arms, they use um, insignias that represents their names. Right. When God comes in, the Holy Spirit is brought to stamp the believer, to represent wow. us as the kingdom and gives us a language. You go to the continent of Africa, you meet many different people, and you meet different languages. You go to Central America, you meet Spanish. You go over to the West Indian area, you meet a dialect of English. Well, when you get to the kingdom of God and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, it gives us a language that represents a different kingdom. Mm. But the kingdom is not here on earth. Ah. You see, and that's what bewilders the people, that when we begin to speak, the Holy Ghost begins to communicate us to us to speak here on earth because we've come into communion with Him. Yes. So we end up speaking that which is not understood by the natural man here on earth because it is not the flesh that is speaking it. Yes. It is the Spirit speaking what it hears in the communion with God. Ah. Uh. And when we come speaking that, then we are bringing the utterance from heaven. We're literally not just bringing words to excite people and find a vernacular of English that makes people get excited and jump over cheers because you speak so well. No, what you speak is you speak what you hear in the communion, and the Spirit of God speaks the language of tongues. Right. So that's one of its main evidences because now we know that you've been talking to God and God has been talking to you. Because you know the language. Because you know the language. Wonderful. And if you're afraid to speak the language, then you're not a member or a part of the kingdom. If you're afraid to speak the language, then you don't belong with that set. Because when you belong to a particular country, you speak the language of the country. That, that's good. That's good. That's good, isn't it? Now, now, you know the Bible says this. The Bible says, the, um, in Paul talks in Corinthians, he says, do I speak with the tongues of men and of angels? So we understand there are tongues of men and, and angels. How would you explain all of that? Let's classify it from this angle. Tongues of men, 
fleshly language of which we communicate that we can understand here on earth tongues being one of the main evidences not yes. the only evidence Great. but one of the main evidence tongues of angels speaking a language in the heavens it's a spiritual language also unbeknown to us because it is our spirit angel language speaking back to god mm. the enemy can't understand that language so therefore, the enemy cannot create static to get into that language. So when Paul talks about the tongues of the angels and this spirit speaking, it is Paul learning to understand how to grow in God so that his spirit knows how to talk to God mm. as well as he can speak to God in the natural language. But when he's talking in the angel language, it's when he is literally going into another level of warfare. He's going into levels of warfare. Come on, work that. So in other words, he's going from the level of where he's been filled with the Spirit, speaking the language of the kingdom. Now he's speaking to God about things concerning the kingdom. He's speaking to God about things concerning his own home and his family. And he doesn't wish the demonic kingdom to get in the midst of this. So his Spirit now starts speaking back to God, God speaking back to him. And therefore, the enemy not having any understanding of this doesn't doesn't realize victory is being won even while the man of God is speaking. That's why the text says, while you are yet praying, I am answering. Mm. Because when we learn how to move into the spirit realm, we learn how to get away from flesh. We learn how to move away from this natural want, natural desire, natural will. The flesh now says, you cannot abide here. Holy Ghost has to abide. Holy Ghost wants to talk to the Holy Ghost. Why? Because the Spirit knows all things. Yes. So since the Spirit knows all things, if the best person to talk back to the Spirit is the Spirit of God inside of us to talk back to the Spirit of God. Because if you don't do that, your flesh is going to get into the way. Ah, oh, Jesus. Well, you know the Bible says, I'm enjoying this, this is awesome. The Bible also talks about then um, we pray, um, praying mysteries. <laughs> what about that? Is, is that what it's all about when sometimes we're talking? There's a mystery. There's something that's not understood. What's your understanding it's of that? It's a mystery because first and foremost, God himself is mystery. Yes. God himself is spirit. So everything that he communicates and does is done from the spirit world, spirit language, spirit the heavenlies. When we're talking about the mysteries because we live here on earth. Yes trying to understand what it is we're supposed to be doing and going toward. Mm. We talk about getting to heaven. So in order for us to understand what it's going to be like to get the, when we get there, we have to understand what it is to live in the mysteries here first. Mm. So the mysteries indicating that God, who is a mystery, descends himself from the heavenlies to come among us and move with us, but not moving with us, if you will, in the natural physical form. What we have is the Holy Ghost who is literally moving in the mystery form where the flesh cannot go. Right. There are places that we would never be able to enter into, but the Holy Ghost goes there for us. Yes. And in the mystery or the mysterium of the flow of God, he comes back over to us where he's been talks to us about where we flesh has never went to and makes us look like we've been there. So when we talk to God about, when we talk to the people about what we see, we didn't see it in the flesh. It was the mystery of God yes. inside of us through the power of the Holy Ghost taking us into a place we had not yet been. The, the, the secular world calls it deja vu. Yes. Hollywood has captured it and created all of this phenomenon of bright lights around it to call it the spirit world and charms and the extras. We understand it that it is the presence and the awesome power uh. of the almighty God who loves us so much he moves from in the beginning God and let there be God and speaking over the waters God to becoming physical flesh Jesus yes. walking among us but says I can't go without giving you who the real another level of mystery is. Yes. So he gives us Holy Ghost. Now when Holy Ghost comes in, he's taking us into again another realm. Yes. He's taking us into a place where we find ourselves lost in the spirit. What does that mean? It's a very good cliche in church. Yes. But technically what we ought to be saying is I'm in the presence of God. 
Remember when I said God is a communicative God? Yes. If he's a communicative God,